Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be editing these images using the brand new Lightroom Classic version 12 which has just been released by Adobe and I'm going to be telling you why you need to update to this latest version especially if you are a wedding photographer because the new features are absolutely insane they just give you so much control over your editing but before we get into that I wanted firstly to apologise for not uploading to my channel as much as I would have liked to recently the past few months have been absolutely crazy. I usually shoot around 25 weddings a year, but this year, with second shooting, I've shot well over 40 weddings. On top of that, I've been running my Patreon, which involves hosting at least three two-hour live streams every month over there. Plus, myself and my partner Helen have been working on and have now launched Flashmasters, which is the biggest project I've ever worked on in my career. It's a completely new education and awards brand which recognizes and celebrates the best off-camera flash photography in the world. I could not be more proud of Flashmasters. It's taken off far better than we could ever have hoped and we already have members based all around the world which is just such a massive honor. But wow, it has been so much work, so much more work than I ever would have realized beforehand. If you would like to find out more details about Flashmasters, then the best thing to do is to re-watch the launch live stream, which we held on my YouTube channel about two months ago now, because in that video, we talk about all of the benefits and everything that Flashmasters is. So please go back and watch that video. And if you would like to join us over in the Flashmasters community, that would be amazing. And you can do so at flashmasters.co. As I say, it's the biggest thing I've ever worked on in my career and I could not be more proud of it. It's just been so, so time consuming, but it will all be worth it. The good news though is that I'm going to be taking on less weddings next year to allow me to dedicate more time to Flashmasters, to my Patreon and to YouTube. So please stay tuned because there is a lot of cool content coming, including lots of behind the scenes from a recent wedding I shot in Iceland. This was an absolute dream wedding and I can't wait to share all of that content with you. But for now, let's open Lightroom and talk about why the latest version of Lightroom Classic, version 12, is pretty game changing. So here we are in the new version of Lightroom. It looks pretty similar to what you'll be used to seeing if, you've, if you're a user of Lightroom. I've got some images here from recent weddings which are gonna be just useful for me to use to show you the various new features. But I'm, there's probably much more to this new version of Lightroom actually than, than I'm aware of. But what I'm gonna do in this video is talk about the main ones that I've found so far and why, as I say, I think they're so useful to wedding photographers in particular. So we'll start with this image. All these images are just complete raw files. I've not done anything to them literally just imported them. I've not applied my preset to any of them as yet. So the first thing I want to do with this one is to show you the new content aware tool which is under this healing section here. And this is really, really useful because previous to this version of Lightroom, to really clone out things well, you had to use Photoshop. There was these two options here. We have the clone tool and the healing tool, but they never really work very well. So if I want to get rid of this speed light, for example, let's try it with the, the, with the clone tool. You would go over it like this and then just hope basically that Lightroom did a good job and it rarely did. Like, it's not the worst, but look how bad that ground is there. So, not great. So, let's get rid of that, and let's now try the new Content Aware tool here. And we just do the same thing. We're just going to go around this speed light. I'm going a bit for, bit more around this bit, obviously, because there's that little bit of uh, light coming from the speed light. And let's go down to the bottom. Content Aware basically uses Lightroom's now clever algorithm to try and guess what should be there behind it. And as you can see, it is absolutely brilliant. It is so much more effective than the, the previous tools. And that was something we used to have to go into Photoshop for. It's still not quite as good as Photoshop is. Um, and there are situations where it won't work as well. Like the reason it worked well here is because the background is quite consistent. The sky is quite an easy thing to replicate, but it is still far, far better than the previous versions of Lightroom. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. So let's now move on to this image image here because it's another great tool which I want to show you with this one. I'm going to actually let's apply my preset. Um, the preset, my preset pack is available to buy if you'd like to. The link will be in the description. Let's just make some global changes first of all. Let's just lift up the shadows slightly. Maybe let's up the exposure. Let's drop the white balance a little bit. 
So let's actually, first of all, let's use the Content Aware Remove Tool again, just to go over these lights. You don't really need to, it's just to illustrate the point, really. Uh, and this little bit down here, the bit of frame. If it doesn't do a good job, I just go over it again a little bit bigger. And there we go, it's got it this time. So really, really effective. You can see back and forth what we've done so far. But what I really like is this new tool now. Actually, I'm going to bring down the exposure slightly to illustrate this better. We can now, by going into the masking function over here, we can now select objects. And what that allows us to do is go over the dress. You don't have to go over it perfectly, as you'll see. When we do that, Lightroom being very clever now, selects just the dress and you can see by pressing O as a keyboard shortcut that it selected the dress really well. Let's go in a bit closer. You can see just how accurate that is. What that then allows us to do is to make adjustments to the dress only like that. So we can make that pop a little bit more as than it would have done. And so very, very quickly, we've gone from there to there but it's the object tool, which I really, really love. But the really big improvement to this version of Lightroom is in the masking feature. So let's go to this photograph here. This was taken at a recent wedding of mine that I shot in Cornwall in the UK, it was really cool. But this photograph in particular was taken in really harsh light. It was in the middle of the day. So as you can see, let's just apply my preset first of all. The, the bridal party, the bride and groom and the bridal party are really underexposed, so I want to bring up the exposure on the people in this photograph but not so much to the background because I'm quite happy with the background where it is so first of all let me just do a little bit of straightening because my horizon is all over the place there let's crop in a little bit let's go about here and this is what I love about this new version of Lightroom if we go to masking over here it now looks a little bit different and you'll see this that we can now choose to create masks for each individual person in this shot that is going to be amazing for editing it's going to save so much time or we can choose everyone so in this particular example i'm going to select all people let's create a mask for everyone if you ever got any settings by the way the sliders are in the in a different position you want to be from previous edits you can just double click on the word effect and it will reset everything to zero as you can see as well Lightroom makes a really good job of that selection. It's very, very impressive. So now let's raise up the exposure just of the people, just of the bridal party. So a bit of the exposure, some of the shadows as well. And let's bring down the clarity because for people, clarity often being a bit lower, a bit nicer, just softens the skin. So we probably, I don't, you always want to be careful not to go too far, but I think that looks great. Um, and if we see the before and the after, it's a huge difference. And it takes literally seconds if you've just seen. Just to show you how accurate as well the select people option is. Let's go to mask again. It's going to detect obviously the two people, dad and daughter in this photograph. But I was thinking, would... Lightroom understand that this is dad's hand and not the bride's hand and it does I just think that's just so clever just how accurate those selections are and so quick as well so I'm not actually going to edit that image but I thought, I thought that's a good illustration to show you how accurate the maths are even when body shapes sort of go over each other which is just amazing so let's go to this image now from the same wedding. Again, really, really cool couple. I want to bring up the exposure of the bride's and the groom's face here, but I don't want to select the whole body this time because if I do, then the dress may end up getting blown out. I just want to bring up the exposure of the faces. Now, what I would have done in the past, and there's nothing wrong with doing this, would be to press K and make my selection just using a brush like this and it's not that bad but obviously it's not very accurate but now what I can do is go to person again so let's just select the bride in this example and as you'll see we now have these additional options to select various parts just of the bride we can select the face body eyebrows eye sclera whatever that is um iris and pupil eyes 
lips, teeth, and hair, which is great. I do wish Adobe would offer the option of selecting, say, just the dress or just clothing. That would be really cool, but that's not there at the moment. Maybe it will be in the future. But for now, I'm just going to select the bride's face. So let's just select face. And if we're going to select face, we also need to select eyebrows, eye, iris, lips, teeth. That's all I'm going to select in this example. Now let's create mask. Now I'm going to just bring up the exposure just of that area there. And again, because it's a face, I'm going to bring down the clarity. So if we zoom in now and do a little before and after, see how effective that is. I'm going to do the same on the groom. So let's go to mask and select people. Now we just choose the groom. Again, just face, so eyebrows, eye. There we go. Let's create mask. And again, let's just bring up the exposure and the shadows. Cool. And the other thing that I'd like to do is just change the background slightly, just to really give the couple more punch. And again, this is another really cool feature. What we can now do, if you see in, within the masking options, we've got select background. That will select everywhere in the frame that does not include people, as you can see here. Again, I'm pressing O on the keyboard to show you the selection. So if we want to, we can bring up the, just the background, bring it down, wherever you want to go with it. I'm just going to bring it down slightly just to, not much, just to really highlight the bride and groom. So very quickly again, we've gone from there to there. Let's move on to this image now. Again, let's go apply my preset. Global changes, so let's just bring up the exposure and the shadows maybe a little bit. Now what I want to do on this photograph now is bring up the exposure of the faces of the bride and groom and bring down the exposure of the background to make it a little bit more dramatic. So again, it's the same process. We go to wait for Lauren to detect the people. Let's just select the bride. Again, I'm going to select everything that's to do with her face. I'm not going to select the hair, so I'll create a mask. Let's bring up the exposure, up the shadows and the whites a little bit as well. Don't want to go too far. As soon as you go too far, it looks fake. Then, then it's obviously a mistake. I've got to bring down the clarity. Can we even get away with going a little bit further? We'll do that. And I'm going to do the same with the groom. Again, just the face this time. Actually, we can include the body because it's only going to include his neck. And all of these, but not hair. Create mask. Similar again, just bring up the exposure slightly. Not maybe quite as much as the bride. That will do. And we're now going to select background and pull down the exposure just to make it really dramatic. Again, very, very quickly. Even, that's good. Let's push the whites. Very, very quickly. We've gone from there to there. Let's move on to this image now. If you want to actually see how I photograph this image, then you can do so by watching this video up here. I've made a how I shot it video for, for this shot. Again, supply preset, going to crop in slightly. We'll go to about there. Now with this one, I want to bring up the exposure just of the bride from the, from I would say sort of here upwards and bring down the exposure and increase the saturation of the fairy light. So again, let's do that. So let's go to mask. We're going to wait for Lauren to detect the people. Choose just the bride and skin this time and lips. So again, we're just going to choose those, create mask, increase the exposure and the shadow slightly. And I'm going to decrease the clarity and the exposure again and the texture rather. There we go. Now I'm going to select background. Again, it's going to select every part of that image that is not the bride and groom. And now let's increase the warmth, the saturation, Make it really pop and will decrease the clarity and the texture. Again, I just love how quick all this is now. We've gone from there to there. 
So I hope you can see just from this very, very short video just how good these improvements are to Lightroom and how much quicker it's going to make our editing because having the ability to now just select different people to clone out within Lightroom without needing to go into Photoshop. Say to be fair, Photoshop is still better at cloning out objects but Lightroom is now much, much better than it was. So you won't need to take as many images into Photoshop and that in itself is going to save time. So as always, I hope if you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions at all please do let me know in the comments but as i always say thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time